Hey everybody out there, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. You're in my corner and I have a very special guest in the corner. Would you like to unveil your secret identity to the masses? Hello, I'm Sean Molyneux. Um, I'm a project lead on a current Kickstarter called LTL Horizons and a former member of the Media Blaster staff from the good old days of the anime industry. Now, I will say it was really interesting getting my list of people I was interviewing this week because that's, that's essentially what happens is Chris, you know, goes and stalks people and finds them and he gives me a list and then I, you know, do my own research. And there was something about the name of the Kickstarter that caught my attention and I was like, this sounds really familiar. So I, I you know, I investigated it and I, I looked a bit through all the offerings and whatnot and I was like, I have played this. When I was like 13, <laughs> like I, I went and I tried to log into my old account it, uh, like for an hour. I, I have access to the old email and I just I couldn't figure out what old lame passwords I was using <laughs> at the time. <laughs> so I, I couldn't get back into the account, but I just thought it was a weird quinky dink that, you know, so many years later I would be talking to you. Well, if you like, I can reset your password uh, for starters. Um, also, um, yes, this is a, an old, older game that we're launching a sequel for. Uh, the original game was produced in 2003 and launched in Japan, I think, in 2005. I first saw in 2006 when Media Blasters um, was thinking of uh, localizing it for the U.S. market, which we did, uh, and it ran until um, ran, ran for many years there until it was picked up by another Japanese company. Uh, it actually passed hands a couple of times, and then they eventually decided to turn it off. So throughout all this time, now we're talking from 2003 until 2012, almost no technical improvements are made to the game. Um, so you have to admit, at this point, uh, it was looking pretty old. <laughs> and we, we always wanted to put out a sequel because we really liked the gameplay. And um, it, was, uh, it really needed to bring out its potential with a modern game because obviously something produced in 2003 is never going to be considered a modern game now. Uh, so when it was slated to be turned off, we, um, we made a, a bid and by we, I mean, um, myself, uh, and a couple of staff members who worked, uh, for Media Blasters or for LTL, uh, previously. Um, and, um, with a group of programmers who, uh, were actually just friends of ours. We just started a small company. Um, normally a Japanese company wouldn't do business with, you know, seven guys, uh, and girls who were, uh, who were just starting their own company, but because we had a long-running relationship with them, we've been working for them, uh, or with them and for them at different times over the past uh, seven years. Um, they, you know, they gave us the license, and here we are. Well, I got to say that takes a lot of fan commitment just to just to you know rise up and be able to do that. <laughs> well, obviously, we're all fans of the game, which is how this sort of happened. <laughs> I, I kind of wish I had stuck with it a little bit more. I remember I, I finished like the tutorial and I played a few times and I kept getting my butt kicked. <laughs> um, probably wasn't at the best uh, best age to do really well at those type of games. So uh, I, d I don't remember really getting very far. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's going to have a lot more tutorials this time around. Actually, what we'll probably do is we'll take the tutorials out and replace it with so we're replacing it. Actually, we already started with a single player uh, quest type of thing, which is going to cover tutorial aspects and also just single player story mode stuff. Um, it plays uh, a little like uh, what I usually call a turn-based tactics game, which is like Final Fantasy tactics. Um, but it also has a lot of uh, CCG elements. Um, it was conceived actually ahead of its time, I would say, because there was a stretch in the, the 2000s where pretty much every Japanese game incorporated ga card elements somewhere like either in the battle system or whatever and this is actually pretty early for that but um it uses a trading card game system to have like to build your army um but unlike a unlike a trading card game you don't have a deck of cards you can choose any any of your units to put on the field at one time uh when you want to play them um but it's uh it it's some aspects because it has a battle grid it plays a little like a new game called scrolls um and there's a couple other uh, games out there that use uh, there's actually a lot of digital trading card games coming out and actually that's one of the things we're thinking wow Altail did so much of this stuff first we really have to get it out there so people can see it 
Well, now, my, my question is, one of the predominant things I remember when mm-hmm. I played it is it had the four starter decks. Are those the same type of decks, or are you changing them, or are you no. expanding them, or what are you doing there? Uh, well, they've evolved over the years many, many times. They'll continue to do so, but we have the, the four basic fract- factions are the same. So we have the Solar Kingdom of Fall Art, which symbols the sun, and they, um, they're under... The, the reign of the royal family, uh, Prince Verlot, was the second son, but when he was born, the sun rose, even though it was the middle of the night. Uh, hello? Yes, I'm oh, still here. S- <laughs> sorry, I just felt, I just heard it cut out. Um, uh, the sun rose, even though it was the middle of the night, and the, um, the church, which is a political entity in this world, used that as uh, an excuse to, to kick his older brother uh, out of the line to the throne and put the very young, impressionable for lot on the throne whom they could control uh and then the uh and they're all their um the this faction is full of priests and holy powers uh, they're really good against undead they have um a lot of uh a lot of armies that are sort of traditional armies in terms of heavily armored soldiers archers uh formations and um they are locked in a war with the duchy of crest which is symbol is the moon um, and Duchy of Crest is ruled by a uh, cl- uh, conglomeration of royal families with ancient lineages, many of whom have um, many of whom have sort of questionable origins. Think like, you know, uh, states of vampires, or uh, families which get their power from uh, deals they've made in the demon demons in the far past. And of course, the symbols of the moon and their soldiers, rather than relying on armor and formations, uh, usually have some sort of uh, special curse or forbidden magic cast on them that augments them. So you'll see a lot of soldiers with weird abilities. And what's interesting about the setup is that even though the kingdom of the moon has all this uh, demons and vampires, and the kingdom of the sun is all about priests and uh, holy warriors and paladins. There's just as many evil characters in the Kingdom of the Sun as there are good characters, and there are just as many good characters in the Duchy of the Moon as there are evil characters. And the other two factions, um, one represents Earth and Fire, and they're mostly mercenaries, um, and an employee of whichever side uh, would hire them. And the last faction is uh, the Empire of Regis, which is the largest empire in the world, but they're sort of stagnant. They don't they don't take part in any war. They're mostly neutral, and they are all entirely ruled by wizards and magic. However, um, they've become so powerful and, and so neutral that they haven't acted at all in generations upon generations. And the latest generations of powerful wizards have, among their ranks, those who are so bored by the situation that they're willing to sell out their own country. And much chaos will ensue. Sounds like a lot of fun, and there's like a rich, you know, plot there that you can, you know, dive into. Yeah, the story was written um, by Takuji Asanuma, who is the writer director of Star Ocean and Valkyrie Profile. Very exciting. I know that there's some Star Ocean fans in our live chat. <laughs> Probably um, throwing confetti at the mention. <laughs> But there's a lot of there's a lot of you know legendary artists who are also um, you know involved in the making of the game. Uh, could you mention them and explain some of the other work that they've worked on? Sure. Now this game, of course, is originally a Japanese game. The first one. Our sequel is being produced by an American company, but the Japanese company is still 100 percent in charge of the art, and that's because they can supply us with the most amazing artists uh, in the Japanese video game industry. Um, our you know, our our lead, the the one we have have to mention first is Katsuya Tarada. That's because he created those amazing world building uh images for the Legend of Zelda series for the first three or four games. Um uh you can find uh you can find these online and they've got so much influence from Mobius and they're just amazing works of art, every single one of them. And just the fact that that was was, was influencing the creation of um the atmosphere of Zelda and the encounters within the Zelda games is pretty amazing. Uh, and which is funny because as a kid playing those games, those games totally caught my imagination, even though they were just little pixels. Um, and, and I can see the sources here. Uh, he also was, um, he's done a lot of other work that uh, I'm sure, you know, in America, I know that really big was the Blood the Last Vampire. 
um, a few years back, uh, which he was the character designer for. He also works on a lot of live action films. Um, so he worked on uh, Devil Man live action, Godzilla Final Wars, but he's also done design work for the American Hellboy movie. Um, and he did a supplementary illustrations and such for Pacific Rim. So this is a person with major high level connections. He's a serious guy, and his life's work is called The Monkey King, which is a manga that uh, is just like every page is a work of art. Uh, I recommend everyone take a look at it. Google image search is your friend. Um, Yuji Kaida is um, another one of our big artists. He has produced an enormous amount of work for the Godzilla series, uh, the Mobile Suit Gundam series, Transformers, and uh, Macross Robotech. Um, he creates his, his job is just to create these huge paintings of these famous characters in action and pretty much any time you've been exposed to those um those uh those properties you probably have seen his work so if you see a dvd cover that's a painting if you see a box uh art on like a toy if you see a poster if you see anything it's he's the one who made it he just produces thousands of pieces of amazing work uh for these these properties and he's a great guy he loves designing monsters he's done most of our big big monsters literally big um uh shanya yamashita is um is uh not uh, is a little uh, a little younger than those guys but he's uh he used to be uh heavily involved in, in almost every square enix game he was from 2003 until now uh, he works as like a weapon designer, armor designer, clothing designer, and character designer. Uh, he's taken the lead in a bunch of major games too, like Final Fantasy X, Tekken, Tekken Team Tournament, Valkyrie Profile 2, Disgaea 4. Um, and he's probably most famous for his Bishojo line of illustrations and statues where he redid all the Marvel characters, or female characters, DC female characters. These are all officially licensed um, by Marvel and DC. And he's worked on tons of stuff in that line uh even uh mass effect 3 uh men in black ghostbusters star wars um <clears throat> and our, our fourth of our our big fours hitoshi yoneda um he's maybe not as dramatic as some of the other guys but what's amazing is he just has a huge career in the japanese video game industry he was there really early on and he's still working now every day and his just general influence and a lot of people say oh you know uh, there's just sort of a standard art style for the Japanese uh, video game industry. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been copied heavily, uh, especially by Korean and Chinese games. Um, and, you, you know, it's, you see it everywhere. Uh, but Hitoshi Yoneda is someone who made that style because of the amount of work he's produced over the years and the fact he's been in it so long. So he's, uh, for example, uh, he's done the entire Fantasy Star series. The name for my childhood. Um, he's also known for Secret of Mana, um, and most recently, Wizardry Online. Wizardry Online. I will eventually actually start up that game instead of leaving it installed on the desktop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, um, the project lead on that game, or one of the project leads, is actually the head of the Japanese team. Uh, Wizardry Online has had, you know, it it has some really amazing things. It's it's gotten mixed reviews, I know, but it's the permadeath is definitely is definitely the uh, hallmark of of the, the team lead on the, the Japanese side. I can tell that, that he was behind that. <laughs> I'm so slow. I'm, I'm still playing the console one, so I'm not even on the online one yet. Like, me and my friend downloaded it and have it installed, and they're playing, and I'm just sitting and being like, I'll join you probably when you're, like, level 60. It'll be fine. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's generally what happens to me. <laughs> but, no, it's, it seems like you have a real, real big, talented uh, staff to work with. Um, when you launched the Kickstarter... Um, how was the initial reaction from fans? Uh, the initial reaction was really, really good. Um, it was our first Kickstarter, or it is our first Kickstarter. It's still ongoing. Um, I would love everyone to check it out. Um, but uh, we had, um, you know, all, all, it was great. It was like meeting old friends because just so many emails would come in day after day. Oh, I played this game five years ago. Oh, I played this game X years ago. And, like, I always wanted to play it more, but, you know, it won't run in my browser anymore because it's too old or, you know, X, you know XYZ. I, I wanted to introduce it to my friends, but they couldn't get past the graphics, so I gave it up. And I'm, I'm so happy that it's going to come out with a sequel. Um, yeah, it was like a little family reunion happening uh, with the fan base uh, coming back, which is really great to see. Um, we also had a lot of... Uh, we, um, well, My co-founder, Jeff, is, uh, is 
used to help out with Kineticon. He was one of the the founders. Um, and Des, he has a relationship with the webcomic community, which is huge at Kineticon. So we have a, a big outpouring of support from the webcomic community, which is really great. Um, we have them. We had the webcomic community guys do, you know, custom art for the cards just for the Kickstarter. So um, Tim Bucky from Control at the lead. Uh, um, Zach Weiner from Saturday Morning Breakfast Serial. His stuff is so funny. He's he's huge. Um, uh, of course, uh, um, we have Doctor McNinja. Um, we got uh, Sluggy Freelance and uh, a bunch of others. I think there's actually at least like six or seven others. Um, I can't keep them all in my head. That's how many we have. Well, with the amount of information you have to keep in your head with, like, thousands of cards and artists and things like that, I can totally understand. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. <laughs> well, now, for for the fans out there, um, is there any place they can get updates besides the Kickstarter? Are you guys running Facebook and Twitter? Yeah, we have a Facebook page. Um, face, uh, It's just, uh, you know... Facebook backslash LTL, uh, or you search for LTL America. Um, and I believe the Twitter account is also LTL America, LTL underscore America. Um, yeah, we're, we're constantly updating. Um, you know, and we're, we've got more announcements to come. We are working on a lot of, um, <laughs> running Kickstarter is interesting because it puts a time limit on everything and we're simultaneously trying to close deals so we can announce new things. We've already made some announcements to the game, um, so far during the Kickstarter, uh, and there'll be more to come. Um, actually, I can make one right now, I think. Uh, would you like a small exclusive? As long as you're not going to get in trouble for it, we would love uh, it. <laughs> I might. Uh, I hope I don't. Um, but uh, w it's looking like if the Kickstarter is successful. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure if you remember from the game, but the, the cards do occasionally speak. It's not a ton of dialogue, but the, ca the cards do occasionally speak. Um, it's with text. Um, and if we're, for a single-player game, we would also like to have... Uh, uh, Obviously, there's going to be a lot of dialogue in there. So it's looking like as long as the Kickstarter is successful, um, that we'll be able to do an English language dub for the game. Um, that's the plan right now. Uh, obviously, it'll depend on the Kickstarter's success, but it's looking quite possible. And I happen to be reminded of this and got the idea to possibly uh, bring it up when I'm looking at your site because I've been talking to Michael Sensor Nicholas, uh, his dubbing studio, NYV Post. Um, it was a favorite of mine when I was working at Media Blasters. Uh, we did Berserk. Um, we did uh, the new Giant Robo dub, um, Phoenix, uh, and a ton of other major shows with him. And it was awesome working with him. I love his studio. Um, so uh, I've talked to him, and he's definitely on board. If we end up doing the dub, um, then he'll be happy to, to do it at his studio. He's definitely a great guy to work with. I, I got the chance to meet him at Yomacon yes, last year, and I felt so bad because the poor man could not sleep. <laughs> he mm -hmm. was always hyperactive on, on something. <laughs> yeah, well, if I give him even more work to do, I think he's going to sleep even less. That sounds like his favorite thing, though. He's he's one of those workaholic people, so it's in his nature. <laughs> but no, that's, that's very exciting, so hopefully we'll see some of our, our favorites in the game. Yep, and there's... There's still more going to be more announcements to come on the Kickstarter page, but um, we do need some help. Um, we're we've uh, we're about 40% to our goal. Um, the last week is usually pretty huge. You can get uh, to half your money there. So we still have a small gap to close this week to um, to be on the right track to be funded. So you know, guys, come by the page. Uh, just a dollar helps. This way. Uh, you can uh, read my exciting articles that I publish about um, about the game industry and working with the Japanese artists. Uh, I usually publish them every other day or so. And um, just love to see any show of support from the fan community. Um, you know, we're fans ourselves of games and anime, obviously. Well, for the listeners out there, we're actually going to take a short break, so you guys can pledge to the Kickstarter while we're on that break. <laughs> Don't fret, though, because our special guest is still going to be here, so keep it tuned to 91.8 The Fan, where we play everything you want and nothing you don't. Hey, everybody out there, you're still tuned to 91.8 The Fan, and my special guest is still alive and breathing, at least I hope he is. Yep. Okay, cool, still alive. Would you like to reintroduce yourself to the people out there? 
I'm Sean, uh, Sean Molino. I am the project lead on the LTL Horizons, which is a video game that currently has a Kickstarter running, and a former member of the anime industry uh, as a producer at Media Blasters. Now, one of the things we were talking about behind the scenes is some of the reward tiers for pledging to the Kickstarter. Um, is there any that you want to show off to the listeners that way they can, you know, uh, drool on their keyboard? Well, yes, I would. Um, and, uh, of course, I'll be talking about some of the higher level ones because they're most exciting. Um, obviously, we have uh, a pretty extensive team of Japanese artists, uh, as I've been talking about earlier. And um, we have tiers where you can create a new card. Um, where you can design the entire card from scratch, its abilities, its uh, what its content, its backstory, and of course, you get to um, decide what the art on the card is going to be, and work with um, well, probably a translator, uh, and one of the Japanese artists on our staff. Um, we have one set where you can do uh, a single card, and another option where you can do an entire pack of cards. Um, we also have a number of um, artists that have have joined our team uh, that aren't Japanese artists to give us a little more variety because um, of our connection to Kineticon, we had access to a lot of them and they all really liked the project and were like, oh, we really want to get in on this. So um, one is uh, Christopher Hastings, the Dr. McNinja artist. So we have a lot of um, webcomic guys who are pitching in on this Kickstarter, but his art is really, really good. Uh, he's doing uh, a tier, so he will draw, um, he prefers to draw ninjas and dinosaurs, <laughs> by the way, um, but he will do whatever he want. Um, he's got a commission tier. Um, we also have uh, two celebrity artists, um, Arthur Sidem, who is the uh, genius behind all the covers for Marvel Zombies. He's known as the Zombie King because his... Um, skill is to create a zombified version of any major any character he's done superman spider-man he's done um clint eastwood he's done tons of artwork for the evil dead series um he's an amazing artist his everything he does is unbelievable paintings um and he will zombify your favorite character um and uh and the last the last celebrity artist we have um is niels ham niels ham is a uh, legendary magic artist uh, for Magic the Gathering. Uh, he worked on Grave Titan, which is very famous. When we ran into him at Khan and showed him the game, he was like, oh, this is great. He loved the fact that the artist had so much freedom. So in a video game where an artist would be designing a monster or a character, right, then his design would be given to a CG artist a modeler who would make a 3D model of it and then that would, and then that would go to a painter and then that would go to a texture guy and that would go to a clothing guy and then that all go, they would go to a posing guy and an animation guy. And sure, oh God. <laughs> all, these, all these guys are actually really talented artists, so the final product is going to be amazing. But it's not the same as getting a exactly the image that's in the artist's head, which is what you can do with a TCG game, style game, where the units are represented by single pieces of art. Uh, and he was really impressed with the art we had, and he's like really wanted to be part of it. Um, actually, um, he's also a, on a stretch goal, and we were going to create a stretch goal for him uh, where he would create a piece of art, and he said he'd only do it on one condition, and that is that he could, could get to do two pieces of art because he couldn't decide what he wanted to do, um, and he gave us a discount. Very but, neat. <laughs> but he does have a tier as well um, where he will, uh, he will create a card for you. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, fans out there who are super excited to learn those things. And I'm sure they're like, well, now I have to steal from my mom's purse, which is wrong. Don't do that. But you could raise the money by a lemonade stand. I'm just saying. Do it the right way, people. <laughs> Good point. But, but no, the, the fans can also find you on Facebook and Twitter. I know our live chat has already linked to that. So, Thanks. yes. Um, is there anything else that we might have forgotten? Any other places where people can stalk you or the project? Um, well, we do have uh, a main website, www.ltl.com. Um, and um, from our, uh, the LTL Horizons Kickstarter page, there's a number of, of links which would be really interesting, I think. 
And since we're nearing the end of this interview, um, I was wondering if you'd be willing to participate in a 91.8 The Fan tradition. Uh, what might that be? Basically, we ask everyone whether they're a voice actor or not if they'd be willing to do a bump for us. Uh, I can do my best. Um, it's I'm... okay. We just ask you to say a line. You shouldn't be intimidated. <laughs> oh, I'm just relieved that the request allows me to keep my shirt on. Yes, you can keep your shirt on. We might take your shorts, but that's okay. Your wife's right next to you. She can have them anyway. <laughs> but no, basically we ask if you'd be willing to say, Hello, my name is... You insert your name... I do this, you can insert your job title, the project you're working on, whatever you want, and you're tuned into 91.8, The Fan. I feel like I should write that down. Well, if you would like to write it down, I will certainly repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, hello, my name is, you insert your name, I do this, you can insert whatever you want there, the URL to the project, um, what your official title is, whatever you want. And you're tuned into 91.8, The Fan. So whenever you're ready, you can do Alrighty. the bump live on air. <laughs> Alrighty, I'll do my best. Hello, my name is Sean Molyneux, project lead on the LTL Horizons video game. And this is 91.8, The Fan. See, that wasn't that very hard at all. You got that. I cheated. I wrote it down. It's okay. Most of the voice actors cheat, too. They, they try and hide it, but I can hear them, like, scrambling for paper. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to tell the listeners out there? Any words of wisdom, dating advice, weather forecasts, or other random notes? Just that I hope to see as many of you as possible in the LTL arena at some point. Well, thank you very much for joining us, and for any of the fans out there that missed any of this interview, don't fret, you can find it on the website within the next few days. So keep it tuned to 91.8 The Fan, where we play everything you want and nothing you don't.